Hey everybody, Kelly Engineering here, and welcome to episode 35 of Project Ozone 3. Uh, sorry for the uh, short break, I went into crunch time at work, and I'm actually finally back at home, and uh, you can tell the uh, video quality is a little bit different, I mean, I'm certainly noticing it, I'm no longer, I'm on it, uh, I'm on my main monitor now. So, in between episodes, I set this little thing up, and uh, this is a uh, apotheosis monster spawner with uh, helmet crabs in it. Uh, if you uh, just saw that little thing, that's 36 helmet crabs being spawned in at once and being immediately killed. Uh, and that's for the purpose of just making uh, experience and essence to be fed back in here so I can keep my bob duplicators running. So I'm having the uh, octuple compressed sugar cane being made, and I have uh, almost three stacks of it already. But if you look at the uh, apotheosis, and I'm going to turn this off for now. If you look at the Apotheosis Monster Spawner, let's get to a good uh, angle. You'll see that uh, I have all of these things that the Monster Spawner can now do. So, spawn range of 4, ignores players, ignores spawn conditions, ignores the spawn cap, and requires a redstone pulse in order to operate. And it will spawn 36 creatures for me. But uh, yeah, Apotheosis was actually added to the pack in the uh, most recent update. To uh, Yeah, it was either 37 or 38. To Project Ozone, and I am glad it did because it makes getting essence supremely easier. Uh, this little setup over here, uh, whenever the mob crusher kills something, it uh, will automatically make essence for me, and the essence will get pushed to the uh, fluid tank and the fluid tank right over here to this black hole tank. Uh, alternatively, if solidified experience gets created and goes into the small storage crate or into the inventory buffer, it will get extracted out, also put into the fluid tank. And that liquid XP generated from the solidified XP will go to the fluid dictionary converter, make me essence, and it will also go to the black hole tank. Uh, so that's why I have so many mobs spawning here. Uh, I can't get experience from the killed mobs in the mob duplicators. So uh, this was my temporary solution. And uh, it ended up becoming my permanent solution. I'm sure you noticed in the last clip this massive vibrant capacitor bank. Um, this vibrant capacitor bank is feeding every single one of my uh, compressors over here. So, yeah, the quantum compressors now are full up on power. Uh, nothing's being generated right now from anything. That's what I need all of the octuple compressed cobblestone for. I just drop a piece in here and it starts generating whatever material I need in order to make all of the uh, singularities. Uh, you can see that I'm actually using transparent conduit facades to uh, hide. Whoops. I'm using transparent conduit facades to hide the fact that there are conduits in the front, feeding from the chest to the compressor and the compressor to the drawer. Uh, I tried doing it from the back, but it looked messy, and this way I can actually have it look. I can have it look clean while still doing its job. This is what's feeding that massive capacitor bank. These are uh, solar panel 8s from Solar Flux Reborn. And, uh, yeah, I went full ham with the solar panels. I'm only up to 8 because uh, I need to get into Draconic Evolution to go higher than that. But these are certainly doing the job. And uh, what's a factory with a little solar power, right? I also have solar panels up here feeding Vibrant Capacitor Bank. And uh, with Stellar Energy Conduits, I am pushing it down. Uh, into the factory. I'm, I'm really digging this look actually and uh, the higher tier uh, right now they're green and they don't really mesh well but uh, the higher tier of solar panel I go the uh, better they'll look but all of that power is feeding my dimensions or well, my dimension so I have one realized dimension right here ID number 24 it's my emerald dimension and it is uh, being pumped full of power right now and dimension 24 Cool. So I am uh, going to head in here. I also have Dimension 23, which has an active builder in it, but uh, that was a little bit more power in the way that I set up that dimension. I'm not going to do an episode on it. There's plenty of episodes that uh, people can look up. Oh, yeah, look at that. So I have a completely flat dimension full of emeralds. But that's what the purpose of this is. There's a builder going in Dimension 23, uh, and... Yeah, if you want me to do a little mini episode on how to make an emerald dimension or what each of the RF tools dimensions do, 
then by all means say it in the comments and I can make a little mini episode unrelated to Project Ozone 3, just uh, in general RF Tools Dimension. But that is what I'm doing. I have all of the Dimension Editor stuff here and Machine Infuser and uh, different Dimlets and Dimlet pieces. I said at the end of episode 34 that I'm going to consider uh, this one a free episode. For that reason, I'm going to be working on farming for blockheads, cooking with blockhead for blockheads, and Pam's Harvest Craft. Mainly because I need to make the uh, ultimate meatball and the ultimate stew. So let's type in the meatball. Cosmic meatball, rather. So the cosmic meatball requires beef, anti-beef, a uh, whole bunch of anti-stuff, uh, rabbit, mutton, impied, any type of fish, raw meat from the Twilight Forest, venison, yeah, so I'm going to need to create quite a few spawners in order to do this. Luckily, we have apiotho uh, apio apotheosis, thank you, and uh, for that reason, is, uh, this is actually going to be a little bit easier than, uh, than I thought. So I'm going to take, I've already made the uh, botanist, and the botanist is stupid easy to make. It's actually called the, uh, like a farmer block. There it is, the market from Farming for Blockheads. And that's just any type of wood, any type of planks, and a piece of wool. And for that, you can trade rack with this guy for any seed, sapling, flower, or uh, like bone meal in the game. Oh, I guess not any flower because you can't get the mystical flowers, but you can get the basic dye flowers from Minecraft using this market block. So I've already bought every single seed and every single sapling as well as made hopping hopping bonsai pots for uh for all of this and I'm going to move it over to the greenhouse. So I'm back in the greenhouse and I've actually redesigned it a little bit. Uh I have connected it to the main part of the factory through this little corridor right here. Uh, in order to do that, I actually had to, uh, the way that the columns were laid out, I had to redo the columns. But, yeah, I have it now connected to the main factory, which is great. And I've also removed the plots that I had in there, set up these two plots, and every single Pam's Harvest Craft seed is in this plot, as well as every Pam's tree is over here. I'm not happy with how the trees are, I'll probably figure out some way to, uh, redo that but yeah I have pomegranates plums all of the uh, tree stuff and I'm going to hook up another plant gatherer like right here to uh, collect everything here and put it in drawers that are going to be along this wall and with that I'll have all of the uh, all of the Pam stuff being automated which I believe is an after game achievement possibly I can't read all the after game achievements right now but all of this extra space that I have over here is uh, where I'm going to put little spawner areas for the anti-beef and the uh, all of the anti-animals. And uh, I don't know if I should do like a gas spawner. <laughs> Unfortunately, gas meat doesn't have an EMC value, so I am going to have to set up some sort of gas spawning. That stinks. Well, I have no problem admitting that I messed up. So... May as well share this lesson with all of you. So this radish right here, the plant gatherer, if uh, I had the range add on and if I had the range add on it, just picks up the radish. It doesn't replant anything. It is a plant gatherer, which is why if you have the crop sticks here, it doesn't actually break anything. It'll gather what's in the crop stick, but leave that because the plant gatherer doesn't recognize it's something it should pick up. And that's all well and good. However, with the crop sticks in here and this radish, I can't plant this in a crop stick because it is not a seed. So if I go back over to the marketplace over here and talk to the botanist, I'm going to type in radish. These, however, can be identified and planted. So I'm going to have to spend more rack because I messed up thinking that these could also act as seeds and I just planted them willy-nilly. And, uh... Yeah, that is entirely my bad. So I'm going to uh, put this little project on hold for now and uh, do that at a later date because I'm still saving up my rack for stuff and I don't want to spend it. I mean, I know I have 5,000 of it, but yeah, I just don't want to spend it. The next thing that I'm going to be working on is uh, I'm actually in the Twilight Forest again and I'm getting all of these spawners. 
I'm going to turn these spawners into a uh, cow spawner, pig spawner, chicken spawner, and block data, yep. And I'm going to automate the creation of anti-mobs. So, oh, and hang on, after I, uh, there we go. I've also made the flux infused jet plate, finally. And you can see that uh, even though I'm wearing it, actively using it, I'm still gaining some RF on it. That's because, uh, let's type in the jet plate right here. So if you look at the jet packs, you see that fuel usage is 1,000 RF a tick. 2,000, 4,000, 8,000. So using these jet, plate, uh, these jet packs just isn't good. But the flux infused jet plate only uses 50 RF a tick. So now that I have this finally made, I don't have to worry about the uh, fuel usage anymore. And I am zipping around. Oh yeah, that's what the flux infused jet plate does for me. I actually had to make two of them, uh, which was a pain in... It was a pain. <laughs> um, mainly because I needed to uh, do all of the quests for uh, IOTA. Yeah, so I have the flux infused chest plate here, but I needed to go end steel, dark steel, dark matter, all that stuff. So if I'm being honest, I have no idea whether or not this is going to work, but I have a standard cow, standard pig, and standard chicken here. I'm going to uh, let them be killed by the anti. Alright, so now that I have all of this, I'm going to get out of here. Yes! Excellent. So, yep. Entity Abyssalcraft Anti-Pig, Anti-Cow, Anti-Chicken. And let's see here. Place down this spawner. Yep, it's this is now an anti-chicken spawner. Excellent. So, uh, with Apotheosis in the pack, uh, all spawners are now not vanilla Minecraft spawners. They're all Apotheosis spawners. And I can change any aspect of it using uh, any of the things that I did with the hermit crabs over there. But yeah, so I have an anti-chicken spawner. I'm going to do the same thing with my uh, anti-pig and anti-cow. And uh, I will have the cosmic meatball recipe for the uh, anti-stuff taken care of. The next thing I'm going to have to do is, uh, I don't know whether or not I want to make spawners for all of this stuff. Especially not the, uh, <laughs> especially not the ghast. So I actually may just take a ghast and put it inside my, uh, my woot farms. Since my woot farms aren't even running right now. So yeah, I may, uh, upgrade this to a ghast woot farm. Just to save myself the trouble of spawning in ghasts all the damn time. Alright, those manual spawners that I made, uh... Not, my, not the best idea. Uh, I forgot that the anti-mobs from Abyssalcraft, uh, when they die, they explode. So, uh, the first anti-pig that spawned, I, uh, <laughs> I had all the spawners up there. Actually, one of them is still up there. Yeah, the imps. So, uh, yeah, I had them in like a, uh, in a 3 by 3 area, and anti-pig spawned and promptly exploded and destroyed all of the monster spawners. So, uh, <laughs> that plan was a bust. So what I did is I just went through each of the dimensions once again and uh, just made woot farms out of all of them. So, yep, I have a wild deer from Twilight Forest and uh, Minotaur also from Twilight Forest just going. As well as uh, all of the other mobs. I've already thrown them all in and I've been getting like the raw meef, raw impied, rabbit, and uh, the anti-stuff. And I actually have all of the ingredients necessary to make the cosmic meatballs at this point. Here we go, we got everything. Three stacks of cosmic meatballs. Let's throw these in my uh, chemical bag. Awesome. God, that's amazing. So I am just slowly collecting all of the necessary things in order to uh, make my singularity. Is that what I'm looking for? That's, uh, here we go, my Infinity Catalyst. So that's the whole purpose I'm making Endist Pearls, Creative Essence. Oh, I haven't even started on the Creative Essence. Um, 
well. So to solve my creative essence problem, I've uh, made this very, very simple contraption. So the ender chest that I had feeding this compacting drawer where I was putting blocks of inferior essence, I now have that feeding into a crafter tier 3. The crafter tier 3 is taking the blocks and then combining it with the master infusion crystal to make prudentium, intermedium, superium, and supremium. And once the supremium happens, it uses another master infusion crystal, makes the insanium, and then plops it in here. I have two master infusion crystals here right now, because uh, eventually it gets to the point where it does need to use two. After it uses this master infusion crystal, it'll plop it into this mini chest, and then it'll wait until it's ready to be received right here again. Uh, I'm going to throw all this in here. Yeah, see how quickly that goes? Wonderful. But I have uh, four and a half stacks of Insanium Essence, which means I can make Creative Essence now. All right, the Creative Essence. So I have my Insanium, and Simple Crystals have an EMC value, and we just had to make another Master Infusion Crystal, which is no issue. So in order to make the Creative Essence, you have to use the basic crafting table from Extended Crafting. So there we go. One stack of Creative Essence, and we may as well make two stacks. Why did it not go? There we go. Two stacks of Creative Essence. Throw that in the alchemical bag. Awesome. And with that, I'm going to call this an episode. Uh, I know it. Uh, I haven't even reviewed the footage yet. I don't know how long this episode is going to be, but it feels pretty short. Um... Yeah, so I do apologize for it being a short episode, but with me getting back from uh, from out of state and back in my own office, I had a lot of work that I missed over the past two months that I was trying to catch up on. So I haven't really been focusing a lot of time towards recording right now. Uh, however, I am on vacation starting tomorrow, or I guess today's Friday, so starting today. And uh, I have a full week to just focus on nothing but recording. Uh, so I do apologize that this is a short episode, and remember, Project Ozone 3 is going to be on Friday now. Uh, in the next episode of Project Ozone, I'm going to finally get the Infinity Catalyst made, and yeah, we're going uh, we're gonna to go from there. It's just a matter of fixing my mistake from uh, over here with the plants and not using crop sticks. Remember, use crop sticks with the Pam Seeds. Otherwise, you uh, have to waste a lot of rack. But I am Kelly Engineering. I hope you enjoyed the episode, and I will see you on Monday with a brand new series. Bye-bye. Oh,